We've got your worst case scenario survival guide coming up right now. Welcome to the Backpack English Podcast. With me today is Ben McAuliffe. He's a man who just ate a bunch of Scrabble tiles. His next bathroom experience could spell disaster. <laughs> is that is that seven? Is that seven the disaster? Like, well, would that yes. work for a, How did a, you know that yeah. so fast? You knew that it was seven letters like that? Wow. Yeah, it's Impressive. a rain man going on up here. Okay. Uh, with me today <laughs> is the one man who is more than a myth, but less than a met legend, Carl Mandrioli. <laughs> it's funnier that you stumbled over that one. But um, <laughs> it's been a long day, Carl. <laughs> I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say true on that one. That's a good introduction. Okay. I like. like that. I thought if so. legends right that. here, I'm I'm pretty far down. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> all right, man. So all right, we got this episode is brought to us by Enlightened Equipment. Whether it's down or synthetic, get the best backpacking quilts to get your base weight as low as it can go. All right, man. What do you think people are most afraid of on the trail? Oh, do you think it's getting hurt or do you think it's like seeing like Bigfoot? Because while I was doing a little research for this, <laughs> I typed in the wrong thing and I was getting horror stories of people like encountering weird stuff on the trail. And I was like, let's okay. not go down that road. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> I I think for me, I think it's like on be, not being prepared is probably my biggest fear. That, that's you, like you an umbrella that can that can hit a lot yeah. of things. Like they don't they're not prepared with food or water or clothes. Like that's well, anything, it, right? Yeah, it is. But I think for for me, it's more not being prepared if I get lost or if it takes too much time. Like I'm okay. underprepared, whether I didn't bring a tent or I didn't bring enough clothes or. You know, say there was a river crossing and you don't have fresh socks to change into. So now your feet are getting weird. And, right. um, you know, I think, I think it's all that, you know, we've had a couple of trips where we got, we got kind of in some sticky situations that literally had to climb out of, uh, and those aren't fun. So yeah, and being unprepared. Yeah. Just, and just unprepared is just not knowing. Yeah. Yeah. Just to clarify when I'm asking you what people are the most afraid of your, your answer is basically everything. They're afraid of everything. Yeah. It could be this. It could be that. It could be this over here. It could be getting, you know, and your feet wet could be getting lost. Oh you my gave gosh. like four or yeah. five answers there. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, they all go together. Un being unprepared are what people are afraid of. I mean, what, what's wait, one wait, thing that people wait, always ask? Getting you? lost, you guys not having a tent and getting your feet wet are not the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're not prepared for any of those. Otherwise, if you were, it's not bad. <laughs> Why do you think my okay. pack weighs 110 pounds? Because I have everything all the time. <laughs> okay, so the scenario is they're afraid of showing up at the trailhead, not having any gear, not knowing where they are or where they're going. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's it exactly. All right, Carl, oh tell me gosh. the right answer like you always do. <laughs> <laughs> like I always do? What are you talking about? I, I know that... They're afraid of, I know, I don't like we did like a top 10 episode where it was like most common ways people die. I don't, I don't think those always relate to their fears. I think people tend to fear getting too cold. That's, that's, I don't know. That's number one, oh, but that's that up never there. It crosses my mind. I never worry about that. Yeah. But, so, yeah. cause you're confident. Yeah. You're, you're a confident. No, dude. I just, you, I like, I like being cold. <laughs> it's yeah. cold. I got a nice sleeping bag. So I'm not worried okay. ever about that. But yeah. Maybe you're arrogant with that. Maybe you need to take, be taken down a notch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'll come visit you in the middle of the winter. Let's show me how to take myself down. <laughs> um, wow. we, we can get, All we right. can get the hose out, hose you down. And let's go for a hike in the middle of the winter. <laughs> All right. Let me, let me change this. My, what I'm most afraid of is Carl, you know, taking me down a notch because I'm arrogant all of a sudden. <laughs> Isn't that what the trip leader's job is? Like, okay, this person's a little <laughs> overconfident. We yeah. got to figure out a way to humble them. So, so we, we have, uh, we have a team of, uh, of got wildland firefighters that we're working with. And one of the guys is like, we tear them down so we can build them back up. And one of the guys is like, when are you going to start bring, building us back up? It's been a couple <laughs> years now. <laughs> and that's the like that's what's going on here. right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting for you to build oh. me back up, Carl. Tell me when you're going to start building me back up. <laughs> okay. All right. You're doing great so far. Um, what my point in asking this question is, the things that people are most afraid of, whether that is what you're suggesting, getting lost, getting your feet wet, not having gear, is not typically what the worst case scenarios are. And so the most common worst case scenarios 
like strangely are not always related to those things. And so at least from my list, I'm coming up with like, you know, terrible scenarios. How do you overcome them? We've got your guide. We're going to solve your problems. I just came up with scenarios. It sounds like you research stories and real life events. Is that where you went? Yeah. So when we were talking about this episode off, we were going to bring up like stories and describe yeah. reactions to them. So I think once again, Carl, you failed to, to communicate with me what we we're doing. It's oh, dude, it's okay <laughs> if we have different a different no, angle on this. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. No, and I brought up stories that um happen to real people that um both have kind of happened to me. So I know they, okay. they have happened to people out there. So um if you're listening, um you want to send us an email on how you know what happened to you guys. We're we're always here to look at oh, what yeah. misery uh, you guys have been through and how you guys escaped for it. So and did you push the red button? That's always the question right. Carl will ask. You know, we actually have this, and this is something I don't, I forget if I've advertised this recently, but this is meant, meant to come out last spring. We have an episode where we are going to have some of our fellow adventurers out there share their like dumpster fire stories. Oh, and then yeah. we're going to like, you know, we're going to react to them and can kind of talk, talk about it and discuss it, probably judge them if we're being honest. And yeah. oh, we're, we had some we're, volunteers. We're not judging people. <laughs> <laughs> we had some volunteers and they're still on this email list. And anyway, it's, it kind of got pushed down the road because you know Derek ended up taking the summer off, and so we'll, we'll be circling back to that. that that's gonna cool. that's definitely on the agenda. So I reached out to our Patreon folks. If you're on Patreon and you want to be part of that episode coming up, please let me know. All right, you ready for the Bible verse? I am. Let's go. Daniel six sixteen. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king declared to Daniel, "May your God, whom you serve continually, deliver you." Hmm. Ben, how yeah. would you handle the lion's den? Oh, I mean, wouldn't it be nice to handle it like how Daniel did? Just like have that much faith and trust in the Lord to like have him deliver us and we're just petting the lions. Do you think he pet know. the lions? He might have. Why, why wouldn't you want or, or stick his head in there? Like, you know, like you see at yeah. the circus just because he could like, oh, let's try this. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> now we're talking about arrogance. I don't think he was doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one thing the Lord hates is arrogant. Uh, I, you know, I think of that now when you talk about worst case scenarios and survival guides, like, you know, where, where were these people's faith or what were they thinking? Um, when they thought yeah. they were going to die, um, you know, right. was it, was it praying or not? And would the God deliver them? So, um, right. yeah, that's a good one. I like that one for, uh, for this episode. Yeah. So I think all the scenarios I have are better than the lion's den. How about you? I hope so. Well, yeah, okay. cause these are, these were pretty, yeah, these were probably not as miraculous, you know, because it didn't make the Bible, but they're probably up there. Okay. I, okay. Sounds like your stories already have outcomes. I simply yeah. have scenarios and we're going to talk through the outcomes. Okay. So cool. what, why don't you tell it that way? So what happened? And then we'll okay. talk through like how we would handle this. And then you can tell me, tell us all what actually happened. So Sounds go good. for it. What's your first story? All right. My first story comes from uh red rock Canyon in Arizona. So it was two hikers, mm. brothers hiking They're uh, they want to go to red rock Canyon and then they want to swim in the crystal pool. So I've never been down there. I asked a guy about it. He hasn't been down there, but he's from Arizona, but apparently this, there's more in the state to see. Uh, so a mile in okay. the trail started to get to dip down into the river and the footing became gravely steep. They said um, mm -hmm. traction was difficult. After repeated slips on loose ground, the one brother turned to him and said, this is not the hike for me. And he decided to turn back to the car and actually left his brother to do a solo hike. Um, it was at okay. that point, the brother continued on, uh, slipped on some rock going up, fell 70 feet uh, onto a riverbed with the river right there. Um, slammed fat. He quotes as I slammed flat on my back, my skull cracking on a baseball sized stone. Um, mm, yikes, man. So what, yeah. So what would you do? So I'm the guy that just fell. Yeah. And I'm the brother. So I'm just waiting in the car, just playing music. You're waiting in the car. The well, yeah, there's gotta be some sort of time frame for the brother to figure like, okay, I'm, my, my bros do back by a certain time. If not, then I'm, I'm yeah. trying to get help. Sounds like the brother's not very fit, so he's not going to, you know, he's already doubled back. So now he's, if he goes triple and then quadruple back, like, I don't know if he's ex excited to do that. So he's, he's probably going to wait longer than you'd think to go and check on the brother. The hope is that these folks have a locator beacon. So if I had that, I would just press the SOS button immediately. Yeah, That's he my... didn't. Uh, okay. Yeah, so he, he didn't. He actually didn't. And I think what I would, so 
I think this comes in is if one of the persons is coming back as attraction, Steve, um, I think as we call it in the, the firefighting business, a tactical pause. So rather than mm-hmm. push in and something I'm learning, cause I'm not good at this. Cause I still, you know, will run up hills. Um, but having that tactical pause of like, okay, is this smart? Like if my brother's right. turning back, but even if he's not as good as a hiker, so if it's me and you, Carl, and we're hiking and I turn back, would you, would you take that tactical pause or would you think you'd keep going? I mean, it really depends on the purpose of the trip. So if the purpose is we're doing something together and then you're like, I can't do it likely. Yeah. I would turn back. If this is something that we have trained for and we've made a big deal about like, Hey, we want to complete this challenge. Then maybe I would have to have some sort of an agreement ahead of time. Okay, here's what it is. I would have to agree with you ahead of time to say, Hey, look, if one of us can't make it and has to turn back, the other's going to keep going. Right. If we yeah. don't have that agreement in place ahead of time, likely I'm turning back for sure. Yeah. And, I, and it depends on how steep it was and what's going on and, you know, making it to the pools. But I, I don't know if I would turn back either with you if like we roles were reversed. Um, mm-hmm. because you know, I, 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 I do want to push through and it's like, let's do this. But I think we got to come as, uh, as adventurers, fellow adventurers that we need to take that time to just take that pause and be like, okay, if they're, if, if you're turning back, I'm going back. Cause it's not safe to hike by yourself. Right. You know, even mm. I know we have solo hikers and stuff, but if it's a trail we haven't done before, I think that plays a lot into it, especially with the steep terrain. Um, so they should have done that. They should have had a locator beacon with them or their, you know, a yeah. phone that maybe has that cap, that, that capacity. Yeah. So the phone, happened. the phone, he, he, yeah, he had a cell phone, but the cell phone uh, had no service. Um, okay. so he actually, yeah, but it might have GPS. Down. If, if yeah. it's, if this is a more recent story, it might've had GPS service. Right. All right. So what, what did he yeah. do? How did he get out of this one? And so how he got out is he just uh, sat there and waited uh, 24 hours since his fall. He heard the sound of rocks moving. The hikers came. So not even the brother. 24 hours. The brother never okay. showed up. Um, hikers came, got him. They lifted him out. And um, his brother just said, I told you it was dangerous. His brother said addressing oh. um, the paramedics. <laughs> so okay. he, you know, he probably showed up about that. But uh, So yeah. just to clarify, so that, the brother did nothing? Yeah. Like not even warn other hikers? Like, hey, can you check and see my brother's out there? He did nothing. No, it sounded like he just waited in the car and like hung out. So I, I don't know what nah. the agreement was. If it was, I mean, 24 yeah. hours, maybe maybe it was a two-day trip or something. I don't, like, I don't know. Like, um, He did something. There's got to be something. Uh, maybe he was because even if he called him, search and thought... rescue, a lot of times they're like, Well, you know, after we got to wait 24 hours because people typically show up, and so all we're gonna do is check the trailhead. And if the brother's like, Well, I'm already at the trailhead, then they're not yeah. gonna come out there, so yeah, he so might maybe have done that something. was it, but yeah, and maybe, yeah. but it, it didn't sound like it was farther from where the brother went, so the brother could have went to where it was steep and then tried yelling for his brother, but um mm. i guess i would probably think like well carl probably made it farther maybe he's just stuck so yeah right. um yeah that's a tough one right. uh I don't, I don't know what i would do you know it's all it's all different until you get to that situation but you know being prepared um for those situations and taking the pause right. to address it so yeah my, my first scenario yeah. is, is really similar it's it's interesting because you're talking about i mean it's not it's like very similar So I don't even know if this is worth discussing. It's mine was you're hiking through black King of the Gunnison national park here in Colorado. Somebody slips and breaks their leg. Okay. There's no cell service or locator beacon service, meaning like you're in the King. And and even if you have a locator beacon, it's, it's so deep in the King and that you're not able to kind of lock onto a satellite. So it's just kind of like, what do you do in that scenario? And so I guess it's a little different because now you're not abandoned. Let's say that there's three people there, one with a broken leg. So now what okay. do you do? Oh, uh, I would, I would splint first. So get the legs okay. splinted, um, get them moved. Um, you know, if you're out in the heat, move them to shade, get them okay. up off the ground, treat for shock. So get them up off the ground, get blankets around them. If you have it, um, hopefully if people carry, you know, survival blankets, the little, you know, emergency blankets, they come in. I don't know if a lot of nothing. backpackers do. That's an interesting question. Really? Oh yeah. I, I got like seven in mine. Um, <laughs> someone gave me 10 and I was like, okay. Um, but it's something, wait, wait, it's wait. something to carry. Wait, about. wait, wait, yeah. wait. So he's talking about these, like the reflective, the silver blankets. Yeah. Not super heavy, but you carry seven of them with you in your backpack. I got these little, yeah. Cause I just haven't taken them out. Someone gave them to me. I just left them. You know, I'm lazy. Okay. Just kept them in there. Uh, and, and like then, Rocky man, like you just, oh, I got extras, throw it in there. Well, yeah, we, we've done a lot of hiking with a lot of pack and weights lately. So it, it is okay. what it is. Uh, and, um, and then assess from there. So if you got them, if you got them comfortable, they're ready to go. Um, 
you know, if it, if the trailhead's close, you can send one person to it. If it's a group of three, send one person. Um, right. Hopefully nothing happens to them. If it's kind of a sketchy area, do you really want to send one person? Now you got, you know, they get lost or whatever right. you got to think about that. Like now, now you got multiple situations going on instead of just right. the one. Um, so uh, do you carry, do you carry like signal mirrors with you? So, you know, you can, you can reflect that <laughs> for that, you know, I mean, to yeah. who? So, to, the, to, the, to the well, the you get airplanes. I mean, I, I believe yeah, there's they, airplanes near Denver, but yeah, I don't know if they actually follow. There is, but, but the king, it's yeah. like a slit. It's like okay. a chance of it flying right over but, there, and then you being able to signal. It's, I mean, it's literally called Black Canyon of the Gunnison. It's like you yeah. know, so dark. That's why we were like, move them from the sun. I was like, chances are they're already out of the sun there's because there's not, not much sun yeah. going down to that canyon. So then it's probably just keeping them, keeping them warm. You know, if you got matches okay. or whatever, and you light a fire, yeah, keep them warm. Uh, and then you know, worst worst case is if it if you if you're really worried, kind of have to stand them up and move them. You know, or drag them out best you can. Get to get to somewhere where you can be accessible. But yeah. yeah. That's what okay. I would do. What would you do? No, I, I like all those things because it's a Canyon and because it's, you know, it's in Colorado, it's Nash going to be colder down there. So I don't know if there is some sun. I don't know that I'd move them away from the sun. I think I, you're talking about keeping them warm in the shade, which is weird. Yeah. Well, I, like, well I guess, sun. yeah. Put blankets on them. Yeah. Yeah. So I was thinking Northern <laughs> California, like, like okay. it's been hot here. So you want to get them out of the sun here. Um, but it's right. just something to think about, you know, move them, move yeah. them to the warmth. Uh, if, okay. it, if it's too warm, then move them to the, where it's cool. And, yeah, just moderate and, their temperature. I think I get what you're saying. Correct. Yeah. Other than that, I I would send the person to go get help and and then try to elicit help from other hikers. You know, especially if they're if you're kind of wiped out and you're like, hey, can you go tell, you know, the visitor center ranger whatever that we need help and and likely they are gonna send in a ground crew with like you know some sort of makeshift i don't know what do you call those things those little beds that they carry the people out in oh yeah it starts with like a t or something we could call it a stretcher but it's not a stretcher it's like stretcher a... yeah exactly so yeah. yeah okay so we're on a similar page I, I think you thought of splinting the leg first i think that's good all right so yeah and I'll, if you have it in like an aggressive first aid kit you probably have something there otherwise you can use ben's paracord and tie some sticks to the leg to kind of straighten it out and are you well, i mean i know you like... have more advanced training medically but would you recommend your average backpacker if, if the leg looked a little wonky to be like yeah you're gonna want to set that and make sure the leg's straight no yeah definitely don't don't um if it if it's what they tell you is to try to put it back into alignment if you're able to but i went if it's wonky Do but i would recommend yeah. putting bushes or some sort of covering over the leg just so that it doesn't gross you out looking at the leg i mean it definitely would help um keep people you know in the right mind if you cover it and just be like, yeah, it's, it looks good. You know, it, it, it does help <laughs> <didn't> lie to <laughs> them. <laughs> well, I, you know, uh, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to get gruesome, but we put stuff over people before just because it was like, you know, it was bad. And so it's like, okay, yep, don't worry about it. You're okay. Um, and you really just want to calm them down keep them from, um, getting their heart rate back up into shock and all that. So, you know, there's a lot okay. to do, but, just keeping them calm and um you know if you're able to splint the leg splint it but um just keep them calm warm um or moderate you know moderate their temperature that's the biggest okay. thing this is you can do out there band number two what you got all right so this one this one uh kind of happened to me and my daughter and friends um so i can i can kind of relate this was a, a couple get stranded after collapsing in joshua tree uh the california desert when the temperatures were 103 degrees so they went yeah. out with not enough water, um, dehydration set in, um, and they they collapsed. Um, and they, they were, I'll just keep going because we can talk about it later, but they were found and the, hus the husband was- or What are you giving away the ending? What, oh what's happening well, right now? What's happening? Okay. <laughs> we can talk about it later. I just want to keep going because it's really cool. Um, but right. the boyfriend was lying on the girlfriend to protect him, to protect her from sunburn which I thought was oh. cool and then protect her okay. face from when the, the chopper came. So, um, all right. Yeah. So that one's done so, moving on. Right. Like you already gave yeah, away yeah. all the answers. So yeah, well, nothing to discuss. So here. then part two of that story was we went, we went to, uh, Tucson in the desert and same thing happened to us. I, we didn't get to that severity where we were laying down. But you collapsed <laughs> and then like covered your wife or something. No, no. So I went with my daughter and she was young. Um, but, we made the mistake. So here, here's the problem is we, we showed up to the state park in Tucson and we had no water. 
And so we're like, hey, we want to do a short hike. We want to go to the desert. And can we get our water bottle? So she filled up one 16.9 fluid ounce bottle. Uh, my body, my buddy had his. So we had 32 ounces between three of us. Seems like okay. enough. We get to the we get to the trailhead, and there's a little kid. You know, it has that little harness, like probably a four year old, where they run away and the, the mom yanks the leash from the kid. Okay. Like, if that kid done it, did this trail, we 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 can do it. Like this is gonna right. be easy. Not once did I think that this kid <laughs> didn't complete the trail. That they were just like <laughs> out there in this little area just walking. Right. And anyways, so. Uh, it was, I think it was like 90 degrees when we started, when we finished, it was 117 degrees and it was like within an hour, it, it okay. got hot. That sounds um, fake. We did 117. No. You said, yeah, it was, it was what the car temperature said. And I know it sits more in the sun and all that, but it was definitely, um, the outside thermometer, I think eventually at the bank that we saw was like 115, um, okay. you know, cause it was June. Those are all accurate June. Too, by the way. Yeah, and these are June. Yeah, they are. Everybody knows you look <laughs> trust the banks, uh, thermometer. <laughs> right. And so it's probably, so probably like 85. It wasn't even that bad. <laughs> it wasn't bad at all. We're just from Minnesota. So anything above 70 feels hot to us. Right. <laughs> um, right. So so we get we get what we think is halfway through. We don't even know how far this is. We just know it's a loop of like maybe a mile. And we're like, do we turn back? <laughs> Because wait, it, wait, did you collapse on a one mile hike? <laughs> Sorry, Carl. <laughs> no, I'm with my daughter. And okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, and sorry. so we uh, we we get what we think is halfway, and we don't even know. Like it, it could be halfway, or we could be a, a quarter of the mile in because it's okay. so hot. And my daughter's hiding behind the smallest rock so that she can get shade because she is like right. beat red. And we're like, do we turn back? Or do we keep going because it's a loop? And I'm like, let me run ahead because that's the smart thing to do when you're low on water. And yeah, just run. run. Exert yourself Yeah, more. so I run ahead. I got like 100 yards. I'm like, guys, the car's here. Bring my daughter. I'll get the air going. Uh, I won't tell you what else we did, but let's uh, let's let's st stop there and address uh, the stories now. What would you okay. do, Carl? Okay, so the scenario is you're doing a hike that a four-year-old could do that – I don't a think mile the long did this and, after all. Yeah. I don't think. The yeah. And then you had plenty of water for a mile. So what should you do a hundred yards out from the car? Yeah. Well, we didn't know we were that close to the car. Cause it was like, in all seriousness, it was getting where I was panicked. Cause I was like, my okay. daughter looked like toasty, uh, um, yeah. beet red. Um, you know, it was just a, a stupid decision. Uh, to not know the trail ahead of time. So once again, that unpreparedness. Right. Um, but yeah, and even with these hikers, it seems like they kind of did the same thing where they just 103, they didn't think anything of it and didn't bring enough right. water. Um, they they suggest drinking a gallon of water a day when the temperature is above 100 degrees. Which is a lot of water. But yeah. I would, I mean, honestly, if, if I thought it was a short hike, first of all, I wouldn't go out in the heat unless I knew it was a short hike. And even then I, I don't know that that's all that enjoyable to be honest, but I would probably hike in such a way that my daughter is hiking in my shadow so that she's not in direct oh, sunlight. That would have been smart. And, yeah. And if that's possible, sometimes, you know, the shadow is yeah. kind of wonky depending on where the, the sun is. And then I would have like, I don't know, like she gets all the water and maybe even put, water on i don't know if she's got a hat on or what but put water on something that you can put on her head basically yeah so we did put put water on her head uh we did do that okay. and then we we went to walmart which was almost across the street um and you know okay. those big ice chests where you get the ice bags yeah we we just threw her inside of one of those <laughs> just had her stay in there for a little bit <laughs> <laughs> did, did you stay outside of the freezer while she was yeah, in there, as all like, as all the locals were walking by, we're like, "Hey, we're from Minnesota. He's from Alaska," and they just like, "Oh, we understand," but we didn't tell him we went yeah. on a hike and it was bad. So, um, okay, yeah, that's <laughs> that's my stories. <laughs> <laughs> Do people want to buy the ice bags that have like sweat from like strangers on it and sweat and dirt from the trail? <laughs> strangers, like, well, thankfully like, it was completely empty. brown on the outside of the yeah. plastic. <laughs> Like, what's this? It's all dirty. Yeah. I mean, thankfully it was empty, so she could just stand up inside of one and just be. Oh, fine, you know? okay. But, um, and <laughs> well, it's 120 out. No wonder it's empty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But, um, and, and, and truth be told, that probably wasn't the best because it could have been a big shock to her system, throwing her in that yeah. that cold of um, but it worked for her. So. All yeah. right.
Okay, getting back to like coming up with worst case scenarios for our survival guide. I get that you might have interpreted it differently than me, but this is two stories in one. Like you're packing in Joshua Tree and Tucson. Like what what's yeah. happening right now? I just thought of the Joshua Tree one. Just I, okay. I read that and then thought of, thought of the one with my daughter. So you can just go with your story, man. You can just talk about it. you don't have to yeah. you don't have to like relate it no, to the next thing. one. Your story's real. Yeah, the next one's about me. Real. Yeah, the next one will be about okay. me. So yeah, all right. I like to put the focus on me here. Well, the, okay. Well, I think well, it's good if you can pull from personal experience because you know that it's happened. Yeah. So my, mine's is sort of from, mine is from personal experience. We talked about it a little bit last year. You number two, you overpacked your food on so many trips that you ended yeah. up underpacking food for a tough trip. You're almost out, and you you got like you're almost out of food. And you've got a day and a half left of trail with a lot of hard miles to cover. Cool. So you're short on calories, short on food. You got hard miles ahead of you, day and a half. What do you do? Are you like, and that's the only way out? Like you have to finish the trail to get right. Like, the car is not like a, okay. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, you could press the button, uh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if they go for that. Yeah. Can you just bring me, like, yeah. can we turn this into DoorDash, please? <laughs> no, no, does, does your cell phone work? Does DoorDash work or Uber Eats? <laughs> right. I'll give a <laughs> really good talk with you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they would, you know. Um, I, you'd have to ration. I mean, that's the only thing. Like, I know you're only bringing a little one inch knife. Um, so you can't really do anything with that to, you know, get any animals okay. or anything like that. What but, if it was a five inch knife? Now, what are you doing, Ben? <laughs> oh, now you're going to town. You know, you're setting snares. You're, yeah, you got animals around, you know, maybe there's chipmunks okay. or, you know, grouse. I don't know. Something. Okay. Um, so you got like you really five got, peanuts yeah. left. Just, just ration them, just like one peanut every. Ooh. Every five hours, probably. Is that, I mean, w w how much food did you have left? I mean, you I didn't know. specify. I just said you're almost out. Oh, so whatever you're your rationing out. is like minimal. Yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, if you're almost out, I, I guess I would I would go hungry probably the rest of the day. Um, okay. And that next day, you're just going to, you just either get up and get your food in you so you can get those miles in or um, try to eat throughout the day, ration it that way. But uh, it's, it's going to be hard either way. Like you're just going to. Okay do it you can if you have water um fill up on the water the water will help you too give you a little bit but um yeah that's Eat a bad, water you're saying. that's a bad scenario drink it carl drink I'll it drink i mean it. yeah but uh, uh i mean if you're by lake streams try to fish i don't know like that would be it but you're wasting energy uh right yeah water. everything you said so far yeah. for this episode has been has been spot on good except for this scenario this one stumped you this is your answer is basically just tough it out <laughs> I, right? I've been without water, just not food. So just think, okay. <laughs> I know what to do when they're, you're low on water. Just ration, yeah. do that. You know, food, and never had an issue. So what what, what do you think you should do with uh, low on food? Well, first of all, you got to pull your resources. Whoever, whoever you're with, you have to identify. There's typically going to be somebody. Oh, I thought you were so I'm group. sorry. Okay, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We can, we'll address that too. But if right. you are with a group, even if it seems that everybody's short on food, there's going to be one or two people that have more food than you think, and they're going to have an abundance. And I would, and if you're within a large enough group, I would even guarantee you that if you tell them like, Hey, I'm almost out of food. I'm really short. I'm starving here. I bet you still finish the trail. And if you go through your buddy's packs, they'll still have food. Like you've been starving the whole time and they've been like socking it away. I oh guarantee God. you, I guarantee you that that's oh. the thing, man. So, so, so your, your, your idea is just to smooth off people. I mean, I guess if like, it's a yeah, bad situation. No, but you, you got, you if it's do, really a serious yeah. issue, you gotta be like, Hey guys, can we all put our food out here and see how much we have collectively I, so we can work together okay. to get through the trip? I'm going to put this to, the, I'm going to put this to test. I'm not bringing any food on our backpacking trip. I'm going to okay, smooth off enough. you. I'm going to smooth off everybody. I'm uh, yep. Let's go. <laughs> I don't think schmooze is the right word here. Just FYI. I think it is. I mean, I, I okay. feel like, I mean, and, and what's some people think, like I'm low on food two different ways. Like, you know, if you got one peak refuel left, but two mountain houses left, you might be like, I'm low on food because I only got one right. peak refuel left. Uh, so maybe you're trading food too at that point, you know, maybe, maybe that's it. Yeah. And Ben just oh, FYI likes to yeah. turn our podcast into a freeze dried food advertisement every single time. I think you've brought up the phrase peak refuel and mountain house every single episode. We're not hey, sponsored we by viewers. Them. Yeah. No, we're not, but we have, we have listeners that love when we uh, talk about Mountain House. So we, okay. we try to bring That's it up. That, that, that part's true. <laughs> so if you're solo, or even if you're with a group, the other solution is if you're on a trail where you're having hikers 
around you, even if it's like periodic hikers, is yeah. you can essentially trade with them, trade them something, or even just straight up beg in a semi-socially appropriate way. Okay. So your worst case scenario guide is just to beg off people, hold up a sign that says we'll work for food basically on the trail. I know. Uh, Here, let's, okay. let's role play. Let's role play. Yeah. All right. Okay. You're the hiker that has extra food. I'm yeah. the one that needs food. You encounter right. me. Um, you say hi. And what, what else do you say? Say hi. How's it going? What do you say? Hey, what's going on, man? You uh, have a good trip so far? Yeah, we're trying to make it to the end trailhead. We're trying. Oh, good. Yeah, you're going to love it. Sorry, I keep walking, man. I, I got too many miles ahead of me. <laughs> no, no, no. No, wait. Don't you want to know why we're just well, trying? Okay. All right. Sorry. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but you see where I'm going with that, right? Like, no, you're going to you ask that you question. Be, you got to be nicer, Carl. You got to be nicer. Like, you didn't have the right smile. You didn't, you didn't like, engage me enough to make me stay there. So try to okay. be a little more friendlier next time. But, yeah. I'll try. I'll, I'll be better about that. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. That's my next one. Ben, <laughs> final awful. scenario. What you kind of said, like your scenario. <laughs> just smooth. Just ask people for food. You're like, yeah, I, no, I've so done bad. it. I've had his it do before. His his is rationalizing. His is rationing food off. That's horrible. Just beg people for food, Ben. That's all it, you got to do. You're telling. Oh, right. oh my gosh. I'm telling Anyways. you, you're out of food. I get what you're saying. That some people, when they say they're out of food, they're not really out of food. Yeah. But I've been in situations where I'm truly out of food and I've had to beg off people on the trail. And because so many people overpack their food, they're happy to give it away. They're like, oh, yeah, we got know, it. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But what would you do if you didn't? You couldn't have that option. That's that's what's funny. Then you starve and, and then you press the red button. Okay. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Why All did right. Carl push the red button in 2025? Because <laughs> he was hungry. He was hungry. <laughs> Oh my gosh. All right. So my next one's oh, yeah. uh what you get? Uh, Last in, one. So this one's this one's personal. So this one I was in the boundary waters. I was fly fishing. I was away from the campsite. I was with my folks, uh, and my siblings. Um, and I climbed up on some rocks to get over this boulder uh to fly fish, and I sliced my hand uh and didn't even realize it. Started fishing, and all of a sudden I just see uh blood going down my my arm, and I panicked because I was far from the campsite and we were far from town. Uh, what would you do? Far from the campsite, far from town. Do you have your first aid kit with you? No, I just have my fishing pole. That's it. Fly rod. Okay. I don't know if this is a thing, but I'm guessing that if you have something, some sort of sterilization or something, cause if you're going to be cleaning fish, you have something that you're going to be nope. able to clean. No, no, no. I, all I had was my fly rod and my lures and that was it. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. So are you going to stitch yourself up with your, with one of your flies and fishing line? Probably not. No, I panicked and I ran back to the campsite. Uh, I think I might've brought my fly rod with me. I can't remember. Uh, I walked in holding up my hand like this. So they didn't know what was going on. And, um, we, we went to town and got butterfly strips because we didn't have enough. Uh, but we put some compression on it, put some, uh, you know, just wrapped it really good. Got to town butterfly strips uh so that's something that i always carry now um th this happened when i was 10 so something to okay. put in your, your your pack um they make glue super glue for skin that's a good one too right. and then butterfly strips um so that's that's how i conquered that one uh, my mom's a nurse so it helped and then i still didn't trust her judgment so i was like no let's go to the doctor and get this and he wouldn't even do anything he's like oh your mom did good so she, oh, that's she won't cool. let me live that yeah she wouldn't let me live that down so thanks mom for right. having that but yeah so let's be honest um, man Let's be yeah. honest. If you're talking about you're you're adding some butterfly bandages to your first aid kit, based on what you said already, you're really adding twenty to thirty of them, right? Yeah, whatever comes in a pack, I bought two packs, and that's what's going. And then I also got the quick clot <laughs> that stops the bleeding too. So uh, I'm prepared. Okay. You know, our okay. first aid kit's part of your uh, base weight because they are for me, and I'm probably at like twenty two pounds because I got like eight pounds of first aid gear. So <laughs> right, right. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I'm glad you're okay. And it sounds like, I mean, that's honestly yeah. like, yeah, if you don't have, if you can't help yourself immediately, but you have the capacity to get back to civilization, to get back to aid, then of course you do that. So that's a good, that's a good way yeah. to do it. Yeah. And I think, I think it, for me, it's just um, letting people know, like, you know, even those simple trips, just having the first aid kits, you know, I, I actually didn't think about bringing one on our upcoming trip um, until I think we were talking like three weeks ago, you were talking about your mm -hmm. first aid kit and your knife. I was like, yeah, I probably should get my first aid kit in there. Um, and get pulled yeah, out. So. Of course. Well, yeah. 
of, of anybody, I would have assumed you'd have the best first aid kit. Are you serious? Yeah, I li- you know I was just gonna cut sticks and paracord and we'll uh, figure it true. out. You know, dental floss, okay. whatever. You know, we'll, we'll make it work. But no, <laughs> we'll have stuff. I'll have stuff. Don't okay. you worry. Uh, I'm not. Yeah, no. Yeah, what, not only am I not worried, I'm just not gonna bring one because I'm just gonna assume that you have one. I'm, like, I'm gonna light my load that way. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna look at me like, come on, Ben, fix this. Where's yeah. your first aid kit? I was like, where's yours? <laughs> where's everything? <laughs> so communication, right, guys, got, well, huge, huge on the trail. Uh, communicate. Make sure you bring <laughs> what you need together. That's right. I got one last one. This is from years past. Maybe a collection of my trips years past. So you're on a trip with a group of saboteurs. Ooh. One is the complainer. One reeks of body odor and urine. Ooh. And one doesn't have their own gear and is constantly asking you how to use yours. So like you've lent out some gear and they're like, yeah, how do you? Like my zipper keeps getting stuck on the sleeping bag. Like, is this is that three? Is, this you, is that all of them, or is there one more? I feel like there's the beggar, right? The beggar that needs the. Oh, food. there's way more than this. This this okay. is tip of the iceberg. Yeah, no, oh, I, I'm man. just giving you three to make it okay. reasonable. Okay, so how do you deal with that? Yeah, um, I would I would just finish the trail. I would just wake up early one morning and be like, guys, I got a, I forgot I got a wedding to go to. It's my own. Didn't know it was this weekend. I got to go. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't know it was this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you ditch him basically. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, if one breaks some body out in urine, that who knows yeah. what's going on with this trip? Uh, no, right. that's a tough one. You know, we, we talk about how to deal with that. Uh, you know, do you give them subtle, passive, aggressive hints to like just le- start leaving, you know, your deodorant out near them, and maybe they'll get mm. the, t- you know, the clue. Um, and then you got the complainer. That one's a hard one because sometimes you just, even if you talk to them, like, dude, like, cheer up, like, this is fun. You're kind of being down. Now they're gonna start compl- complaining that you're getting on them. So, right. um, this is probably more just get the trip done, suck it up, get the trip done. Uh, just keep keep going with it and and okay. not invite them back. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, that's what I did in my early years. I, I just kind of yeah, kind of like you said, just kind of sucked it up and got it done. And then I didn't have a lot of people to choose from, so you kind of kind of had to put up with stuff back uh, when I was in college. But now being older and crankier, I think I just pulled the plug. I just say, you know what, guys. I'm sorry, this is not working out. Our dynamics not working out. This is not. I don't think enjoyable for anybody. Let's just call it good. We'll try a different type of trip next time. I'm so- sorry. This is on me. Let's go back to the trailhead. Nice. Yeah, just cut it early. That's a good one. Yeah. I, isn't it funny how when you get older, you just don't put up with this much? So like, as you get older, you're like, you know what? Life's too short now for me to deal with this. Like, I'm done. I don't need to deal with this drama. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Where, yeah. Like when and you're young, you're like, let's keep going. This is fun. I don't just care. I'll it. put up with it. Yeah. Yeah, because you're trying to prove then, yourself. You're like, if I, you don't want to be somebody who gives up. But I know that I'm not that person now because I've had enough experience to know that I can, right. you know, that I'm going to finish trips typically unless this happens. And so if yeah. you have those people with you, I think, I think now you're just kind of, I don't know. I haven't been with a complainer in forever, to be honest. Like, so I'd have to rethink that one, but I would be pretty upfront about the situation and just say, yeah, this is, we gotta, we gotta figure out a different way, a different mindset for the rest of this trip because there's a, a lot of morale reduction going on here. So yeah. anyway, all right, there you go. Those are three of the worst case scenarios that we came up with. What is your worst case scenario? What do we miss? What piece of advice did we give that was faulty? Do you put your kid inside a freezer at the local 7-Eleven? What, where are we with all these things? <laughs> all right. Uh, Ben's got trivia and it's coming up right after this. The trail is calling your name. Are you ready? Are you really ready? Our good friend Roan from Summit Strength can get you trail ready. Roan uses rock solid evidence to design a specialized training program just for you. There are plenty of cookie cutter programs out there that will get you only halfway up the mountain. Make it to your adventure summit with Summit Strength. The link to your success is always in our episode description, but you can check out all the information you need at summitstrength.com.au slash online. It's time to be strong and pain-free for your next adventure. Okay. All right, we got trivia is brought to us by Teton Gear. One way to avoid a worst-case scenario is to buy quality gear. So check out the gear from Teton. It's comfortable, dependable, and easy on the wallet. If you're a newer or mid-level backpacker, avoid disaster and go to tetongear.com. 
All right, Ben. What is this trivia called? You had backpacking trivia a couple weeks ago. What what is this one called? This one's trail trivia. Um, trail <laughs> trivia. And and after the, I failed the last one, uh, I, I probably should have done these harder. But I, I'm too nice, so you know. I think I think we'll you'll hate the. I, I think you'll hate the trivia um, because it's ridiculous. But you might also love it. So yeah, let me know when you're ready. Okay. I'm ready. Go for it. All right. All right. The best, these are all multiple choice, Carl, so you don't need to ask. Okay. It's all, all of them are multiple choice. Uh, and I got three, and I got a bonus one if you want. Uh, the okay. best place to get water for filtering, Flowing River, City Tap Water, Gulf of Mexico, or Home Depot? Water for filtering? Yeah, like if, you, if you're going to filter water, where would you go to get the best, the best <sighs> place to this, get? This is a hard Because, okay, it's obviously not Gulf of Mexico it's like you can get bottled waters so like where are you going in home Depot? are you getting are you buying the water or are you going to like their bathroom and like filling up your water bottle from like the toilet sink <laughs> i don't know carl it's not that hard a terrible question um if you're if you have a water filter with you it's like the best water is gonna be the tap water because tip like there is some bad water that's tap water but if you have a filter for it like one of those brita you know yeah history yeah. filters but if you're talking about backpacking, it's trail trivia, so it's got to be the, the flowing river. What's your final answer? River. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. You you you're right. you're on to how I how I do it. The flowing river is right. the best because city tap water typically you don't need to filter it; it's already filtered, so you wouldn't have. No, to it depends on where you are, man. Flint, Michigan, yeah. back in the day, that had the the water could light on fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, North Carolina's that way too, but yeah. So let's not overthink it, but yeah. Okay, uh, that's what I, I do. That's what I do. Uh, all right. Uh, how long is the trail to Mordor? Is it 2,190 miles, 2,340 miles, 3,109 kilometers, or 1,326 miles? How is this? How is this evaluated? How do they even know? They know. People know. It's a thing because they actually do the trail. <laughs> like they, they actually, they actually do this trail. We had we had uh, Rowan on, and he trains people for this, so they actually know how long this trail is. All right, what was the kilometers so, one? 3,109 kilometers. I'll go with that one. Yeah, you're correct. And I did that purposely to make it easy for you, Carl, because it's kilometers. We're talking about Australia, so that's what it went. Uh, 2,190 miles. Do you know Do you know what that one is? It's the Appalachian. I have no mile. idea. Appalachian. Okay, it's Appalachian. Okay. And then 2,340 miles, that's the Mississippi River. And then... <laughs> 1320 yeah, yeah come on carl get with it and then 1326 <laughs> miles is your house to my house so i did that wait how long is it 1326 miles yeah okay do you have my address oh uh, i got it yeah you sent me a package and i got it off of that so wait you okay gotcha uh <laughs> <laughs> you're scared you're like oh i gotta start off <laughs> Next episode, guys, I'll be inside Carl's house with him. Doing a podcast. It's only 1,300 miles away. <laughs> okay. All he's right. in Ben's. I don't know if you said this, but yeah, you're in far Northern California. I'm in Castle Rock, Colorado. So there you go. Yeah. All right. All right. You ready for the last one? You passed. So yeah. Now it's all, it's all going. Uh, all right. If you walked 500 miles and then you had to walk 500 more miles, what would you do next? Drink more water, get new socks, fall down at the door, or turn around and walk back? Oh, from the Proclaimers, and I would walk 500 more. Be the man who walks 1,000 miles. I don't know that. I don't, I can't. And he oh, falls down at the door? It. Yes, correct. You figured okay. it out. Good job, Carl. Yeah, thank good you. Good job. All That's right. a good one. The That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm trying. You got, I'm trying here. You asked the Apple question a few weeks ago. I didn't like it. But since then, you have some pretty creative questions, man. Like, you're doing, you're doing good here. And not because I got it right. Out. Like they're creative. They're creative. <laughs> no, that's it. You ready for, you ready for the, the last one? This is the bonus one. You yeah. want it? All yeah. right. Where are the rodents of unusual size located? Arctic swamp? The green swamp? Fire swamp. Fire swamp. There you go. You got it. I figured. I okay. figured because you threw me a, a, a Princess Bride trivia. So I was like, oh, I got to see that. I've before. seen it too many times. Yeah. yeah good good job. So far, you're up. Uh, you're up in trivia. So good job. Okay, yeah. So, and we've got I think two episodes left before our trip. So you've got one more chance to stump me, and I've got. I guess if you lose the next trivia, like you're done for. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start adding more names. I I cannot do okay. names. Um, 
So next one, I might just do two out of three questions or names. Well, here, okay. What, what, what do you? You're a teacher, right? What do you teach? Yeah. Well, you don't even know that I'm a teacher. Thanks. thanks no, man. I know you're a teacher. I just don't know what subject you teach. Uh, eighth grade social studies. Okay. So I was wondering because you got the Orville right one wrong last time. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, history teacher does not know everything about history, but so yeah, all right. <laughs> the name's all self familiar. All right, let's go. All right, so stay tuned for trivia for next time. Chibits, I've got we got another review. This one is actually from Tupperware Mike at the outdoor right. retailer show last summer. We connected with a company. We already mentioned them. They're called Dark Energy, which I don't know how you feel about the name for that that company, but I don't know. It's it's energy is the key here. They make rechargeable batteries that you can bring on the trail Ooh. and mike had it like like they make like some legit good stuff so here's what mike had to say yeah hey bnb family it's top War mike and at the outdoor retailer show we ran across this company called dark energy and they claim this thing can go to it's a battery bank we should probably start off with that it's a battery bank and they claim that it can go down to negative 20 degrees you can freeze it and it still holds its charge so it's all insulated and it also with this cup with this case open like this it's water resistant but with the case closed they said that it's waterproofed so we'll go ahead and show you the battery status and let you know that it's full see all the green lights so we're going to stick this in a bag and fill it up with water and we're going to fill it in the freezer and we're going to leave it in there for a week. They told us that they left it in for a month. So we're just going to do it for a week. And then I'm going to take it on our July trip coming up to the, to the Desolation Wilderness and see if it works. So let's get this thing filled up. I think that's enough. All right. So that's completely submerged. So that's test number one. Electronics in a freaking water bag and i spilt it all over the counter oops uh is enough of a test for me so there you go it's full of water now let's get it in the freezer we're gonna leave it there for a week and see what happens after a week all right day one starting now all right, it's been about a week since we put the dark energy battery bank in the freezer in a bag of water. So that was test number one to see if it was waterproof. Threw it in the freezer, froze it for about a week. So we're gonna about to take it out, then we'll thaw it out and see if it's still at 100% charge like what dark energy claims. So let's grab it out of the freezer. Oh, we got some enchiladas on top of it. Here we go. Fully block of ice, fully encased in it. It's the same dark energy battery bank. So I'm gonna thaw it out, throw it on the counter, put a little time lapse on the camera so you can watch it thaw out. And we'll see if it's still at 100%. So we just pulled it out of the block of ice, let it thaw out, and give a little wipe off, get some of this water off of here. That already is impressive that it was submerged in water and then frozen for a week, and then it still came out. Even just having electronics and water, and then it came out still working, Comes has a flashlight on it, which is pretty cool. So we know it's still working. Then this little flip top right here is what makes it waterproof. And then even with it open, it's water resistant. So even all the connectors inside are water resistant. So let's get this thing plugged in and see if it is still charged. I like this thing too because it has a PD port. So if you have heavier draw electronics like my laptop, you can plug your laptop into this one. It's got enough amperage that it will charge your laptop also up to 10,200 milliamps. So let's check it out. Let's get it plugged into the iPad. See if it starts charging. Bam. It started charging right there. Nice. This thing is impressive. Okay. So 
you all know how I feel about Anchor. I've loved them for a really long time, but they didn't treat me right on a warranty defect, one of their batteries. And so I have been in the market for a new one. And the other gripe that I have is you always, always had to sleep with this th these things in the bottom of my sleeping bag on cold nights. And that's super annoying. It's down there clonking around in my feet. Well, with this thing, I don't have to worry about that now. It's insulated down to negative 20 degrees. That is stinking cold. I will never back back in that cold weather. So I look forward to this being my new go-to battery bank. So thanks Dark, Dark Energy for sending me this. And I look forward to trying out the other products too. Right now though, man, if you're looking for a battery bank, 10,200 milliamp hours, go check out Dark Energy's website and look at the stuff that they have. Thank you to Tupperware Mike, and yeah, check them out if you are interested in getting a battery pack as he described. So, all right, Ben, you got any tidbits? I do. So I got a story. Uh, it has nothing to okay. do with backpacking. has to do, and I, I want to know how you'd handle this situation because I okay. handled it, and I still don't think I handled it right. So I, hmm. I went to town. We live an hour from town, hour and a half from a good town, but I went to the shorter town um to mm -hmm. get food because been working every night whatever and had to restock so i go and i'm like you know what i've been working hard <laughs> i deserve i deserve to eat nice like so i went to mm. this roadhouse place and you know usually like pretty by good yourself? food it was pretty good yeah yeah i'm fine with going by myself and and there's fellow firefighters there because we got a lot of fires happening and cleanup going on so it's it's, it's hopping um and i'm one of the firefighters but i'm eating by myself and I was like, dude, I want cheese curds. Like, I love cheese curds. Mm. There's one thing I like as an app, and it's cheese curds and or mozzi sticks. But today they had cheese curds. So I ordered the cheese curds. First of all, I'm upset because I sat there for like 10 minutes waiting for somebody to get my order and my drink. And right. so this is where I'm like, so I order the cheese curds and I order my Alfredo because I love pasta. And they come back with my Alfredo and my salad. And I'm like, well, where's my cheese curds? And they're like, oh, that table right over there got the last one. Oh. And and I didn't even get cheese curds. So now, and he's like, well, do you want something else? And I'm thinking like, well, maybe you should comp it because you didn't even tell yeah. me right away. Like I wanted appetizers, you know? Um, I'm okay. thankful I didn't get the appetizer. I was pretty full from the Alfredo. But um, moving on. Uh, so I look and I'm watching that person eat the cheese curds. And I'm just like, what do you like? So I just ask, you want like, to go they want to share. Get some. I want to go share. I want to just be like, hey, like I was craving some cheese curds. Do you want to share? And and it gets worse because they didn't even finish the cheese curds. Right. Like they got it to go, they got it to go box. And I'm like, and then they ordered a chocolate cake on top of that to go. And I'm like, man, these okay. people, like, I know they have room now. Like, how it, dare they there. order food to go? Yeah, and how dare they not cop me something? You know, he was all happy. Yeah, I took off the cheese curds off your receipt. I'm like, well, I'm not paying for them. Like, like, isn't right. that what you're supposed to do? <laughs> right. But, you know. Um, but yeah, so I sat there and I ate and I I I I regret not asking them if I could have some of their cheese curds because I kind of knew them as fellow firefighters. We can kind of you know joke around with them, but what would you do? That that's your dilemma. That's your you're like, I don't know what I should have done. Uh, yeah, I think you, I think that's weird, man. I think you don't ask for the cheese curds. I don't think I would ask for that. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I still think I should have asked. I should have just got some. I, I love cheese curds and uh, I mean, it's probably gonna be a month before I get anything close to cheese curds again. So yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, yeah, maybe, I don't know. I think, well, did they come in after you? That's what would really chat. No, they were, they were speak. already sitting, but okay. they took they were there they, of you. Like, they were, but they didn't order. I or I would have ordered first because if they would have came to me, like it was too, it was weird. Like I sat there longer than yeah, it was weird. But they got there uh, first, but you were there longer. That doesn't make any sense. Well, like I was there longer without anyone helping me. So okay. they could have they if I sat down by myself and I was ready. Like I put my menu away. I was ready before then. They're still looking at the menu, but they waited until they were ready. Took their order first, and then okay. my order. And I felt gotcha. like they, if they would have gone to me, then they would have canceled their order of cheese curds. And yeah, but all right. Well, that's my, my tip. Yeah. Okay. Well, my restaurant scenario, I got a, I got a quick one for you too. Okay. You might, you'd, you'd probably be more upset at this one then because, so I had a $50 gift card to a restaurant, but it was like one of those, I don't know. It was a chain. And so it said 
this $50 okay. gift card is good at all of these restaurants. And so it had like four different restaurants on the back. Oh yeah. And so I, I was like, really, we're going to one of these tonight. I'm hosting a Bible study there and I'm just going to let, I'll just pay for the first $50. The guys can split the rest of it. Right. I'll just use the gift card. Uh, yeah. And so, but I was like, I don't want to say that and then have it be weird and not work. So I yeah. called them ahead of time. I was like, Hey, here's the gift card that I have. Does this work at your restaurant? I just want to confirm. And they like passed me on to somebody else that knew. And the guy's yeah. like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We take that. So we go, we order, we eat. And then I throw the gift card down and then they come back with, they're like, yeah, we can't take this. What? And I was like, was, was Oh no, 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 no. Or what? No, 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 no. They just, no. Yeah. There was, yeah, I was full. They just, oh. they weren't willing to take it. And I said, well, I called ahead of time specifically to make sure that you take it. So the manager comes, he's like, yeah, we can't take it. What? I was like, all right, I've well, heard... I'm like, how should, what could I have done differently? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, that's I don't weird, know. Cause if the gift card says it's on there, it's on there, you know? Right. Yeah. So it has a restaurant on there and everything. He's like, yeah, I don't take oh. it. And, uh, we didn't get comped or anything. And I was, I was like in shock. I'm like, I guess I'm not coming back here again. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's bizarre like i've never heard that yeah, unless it's like a private you do get some gift cards that don't work if it's like a privately owned restaurant you know like part yeah, of the chain, this... but privately owned but no it was that at all i don't know the story i didn't i don't really care anymore Weird. i was just like this is lame yeah. but anyway i would have all right en yeah. enough restaurant tidbits i think that's all we got thanks again everybody for tuning in we really appreciate it we hope you have a great week god bless you see ya i want to